ಅಥ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಪಾರ್ಥಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾಭಾಷಾಧಿಸ್ತೇಶವ ಕಿಮಸೀತ ವ್ರಜೇತ ಕಿಂ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಮನೋ ಗತ ಸ್ಥಿತೋಚ್ಯತೆ ಸುಖು ವಿಗತ ಸ್ಪೃಹ ವೀಥರಾಗಭಯ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಸ್ಥಿತಧೀರ್ಮುನಿರುಚ್ಯತೆ last evening we discussed that tat tat prapya shubha shubham prapya what we get sometimes what we get could be very conducive to what we want and sometimes it could be absolutely unfavorable in life this is cannot be avoided we would get things which are favorable and there would be things which come to us which are not favorable we may not prefer it but it would come so whatever comes this way expected unexpected conducive unconducive joyful or sorrow whatever comes we should know to have strength to take it what is coming on which we have no control because our own past prarabdha would bring these experiences to us what comes we have no option but to, to accept it but the, there is one choice how to accept it so wise person sthita pragna amuni whatever comes to him unexpected all of a sudden things come this person would have the ability to take it in a balanced way in this context we were discussing yesterday about the queen sumitra unexpected all of a sudden things changed and the way in which she responded to that adversity is commendable that should be something which we feel you know like we should try to keep in mind telling lakshman you made a good decision go to the forest as lord ram sevak and if anything has to happen to ram first it should be because that is the sevak's job you are going there as an escort make sure that you are going there to guard him as an escort so you should be very sure that if anything has to happen it should first happen to you only then to lord ram and don't ever come back without ram clear now look at the standard set at adversity this person responds this way we need this to show strength at adversity situations can be difficult but when something like that comes we should know to show strength what happens to us is we panic 
slightly challenging situation we start panicking that state of mind is not good a wise person would not panic a wise person would respond with strength a challenging situation they respond with strength let us cultivate the strength let's cultivate the strength spiritual sadhana practice understanding what is right what is wrong understanding the scriptural insights with depth all that will give us the strength to meet life this strength should be our companion various other things can come and go they keep changing they are there for a while and they change but strength would remain with us we should never lose out on strength even in a you know the like books like hanuman chalisa which we chant regularly there also you see bala buddhi vidya deho mohi bala buddhi vidya oh lord please give me this bala buddhi vidya bala if we have that strength then we meet life well if we don't have then life would dominate us various things in the world would hit us hard if we have strength we live if we don't have that kind of a strength we survive there's a difference surviving living with strength we live absence of strength we survive just survive manage exist just manage something no we need this kind of a strength so in this verse he says the qualities of a wise person the enlightened the highly matured person he is unattached everywhere sarvatra anabhi sneha unattached wherever one goes we walk into the world different things come to us this wise person never takes anything as his he keeps it till it stays when it goes he lets it go accepting what comes letting go whatever has to go without holding it back in the mind so detached everywhere na na dveshti neither does he rejoice nandati neither does he rejoice na dveshti neither does he hate comes what way if something is coming is saying hi it has to come to me it came fine god doesn't get too excited about it and something which you don't like comes and not dwasty he doesn't hate it either he says this is needed it has come to me and we need to know this for sure we need to know this for sure what we deserve will reach us what we deserve whatever we deserve will reach us how that is how ishwara the cosmic intelligence functions so a wise person accepts what comes on the way saying ha this has to come to me it came i accept it i read a story some time back after reading this story it rattled me because it's a very impactful story made me sit and think for a while dhritarashtra questions krishna why should i face something like this where hundred of my children were killed in front of me in front of me they were killed why did i get something like this krishna tells him long ago 50 lives ahead 50 lives ahead you were a hunter 
50 lives ago you were a hunter as a hunter you went around and you want to shoot a bird the bird escaped out of anger you went and knocked the eggs of the bird which was on the nest you smashed it hundred of them you killed out of your anger that is what you're facing now so dhritarashtra looked at krishna and he said why not in the very next birth or in that birth itself why 50 births why not immediately why 50 births he said who can have 100 children who can have 100 children so it must be a special way of delivering kids and only a king can afford to accumulate that punya to become a king 50 lives you accumulated punya then you became a king and now that is settled can you believe to sometimes exhaust karma we need to do punya When I read this, I said, look at the story. You must live long enough to exhaust all karmas. And certain karmas, you need a certain position to exhaust it. So Krishna said, 50 lives you accumulated punya, and now it is settled. Let us remember one thing very clearly, very, very clearly. You and I cannot dodge karma. We cannot dodge karma. We can dodge judiciary. We can bribe some people here, there and get our way what we wanted. We can break rules and escape the government law. Karma, we cannot. Because that is not done by you and me, it is done by Ishwara. What I deserve will reach me. Good, bad, it will reach me. So a person who understands this, that this has come to me for my own reason, that has to be exhausted, it should clear from my way for me to move forward. So it is coming, it comes with a reason, it can give me strength, it can give me something, but it clears my way. So a wise person understands this is what we deserve, it comes, he accepts it. Doesn't get too excited, nor does he hate the situation of that way, accepting. Na nandati na dveshti. So without uh, hating or without uh, getting too rejoicing on it, on facing shubha, shubha, favorable, unfavorable condition, the person goes through life. This kind of a response only a man of steady wisdom can do. Astata Pragna can do. So how do I understand if someone has reached the top, how they respond to the life is sufficient for us to see whether the person has reached or not. Arjuna's question was that, how would I, how would I notice, how would I recognize if someone is a Brahmanishta? As he established, how would I know it? These are the qualities they demonstrate. When we see these people undisturbed, dharmic, accepting what life offers, various things come, they take it. They're saying, ah, it is to come, it has come, I accept it. When Arjuna asks various kinds of questions, logic, everything in the chapter 1, Krishna listens and when he begins to teach him, the very first verse Krishna tells Arjuna, wise person never grieves over anything. Asochyan anvasochastvam pragnya vadanshya bhashase gatasun agatasun scha nanu sochanti pandita. A wise person 
would not grieve over anything. Hallmark of wisdom is not to have worries. Will not worry over anything. That is wisdom. We have that potential to rise up. It's a kind of a decision we make. That I will go into this world, let the world offer various things, but I will make sure that I would not become unhappy. Let it come. I make sure that this should not disturb. Gurudev used to write in some of the letters when people ask anything, refuse to be unhappy. Refuse. It comes. Refuse. World will throw all kinds of things. But we can, with strong mind, we can refuse to be unhappy. Let us not get be. Let us not be beaten out. Let us not be disturbed. So that's what he says, having seen this much, now we will go into verse 58. Again. Yada samharate chayam. Kurmongani vasarvashaha. Kurmongani vasarvashaha. Tasya pragna pratishtita Yada samharate chayam Kurmongani eva sarvashaha Indriyani indri arte byaha Tasya pragna pratishtita Moreover, he says Yada just as a wise person withdraws himself from various things just as a tortoise, kurmonga. Kurma, the tortoise. Tortoise is a very sensitive uh, mammal. It moves. A slight threat, little disturbance, is enough for it to withdraw itself. It walks and it feels there is a threat somewhere, some movement happens, it withdraws itself completely into the shell. The shell of the tortoise is really strong. So once it withdraws itself into the shell, it stays safe. So it walks when the path is absolutely clear, no threat, no danger, anything, the tortoise keeps moving, crawling. But the moment the tortoise finds there is some danger, it withdraws. It has the liberty to withdraw into the shell and stay safe. Krishna gives this example. He says, a wise person is like a tortoise. At his will, he can withdraw from various things. If he feels this is going to go in and disturb him, he knows to withdraw, stays within. Withdrawn and living within. You move at the moment at the sight of threat, you know to withdraw into the safety. You know what people generally do? We are not alert enough, we move. We go into the world, different things keep coming into us. The sense stimuli, walk in. And we see hundreds of things which we see, they all keep going in and frames layer after layer impression. Some of the impressions goes deep and they become a desire. 
And until that is fulfilled, we are unhappy. So walking into the world, we must be extremely alert to know what to accept and what not to accept. All and sundry can't go in and make impressions. If they make, our mind would be more ruffled. Continuously it will be ruffled, we would never find peace. So here is an example so that we can remember and it's a powerful example. That's why in many temples you will find at the entrance you will find a tortoise. What does it mean? Now that you are entering into the sanctum, you are entering into the sacred place, withdraw your mind from everything. One of our Balvihar children, this child came and told me a joke on tortoise. A tortoise and a rabbit, we know the story, right? The tortoise and a rabbit had a race. Who won the race? Okay. Hmm. So the child tells me the story, Swamiji, tortoise and a rabbit had a race. It was on the field. Rabbit won the race. Oh, okay. So the tortoise said, no, no, let's have a race once again. By the river front. Rabbit agreed. Again, they had a race at the river front. Rabbit won the race. Rabbit said, no, no point racing with you. Tortoise said, no, no, no. Last time. What is it? We will race who goes home first. That's the race. And that person is a winner. And the rabbit started. Tortoise withdrew. <laughs> tortoise reached home. All that the tortoise has to do is pull back. You are inside your home. I tell you, I love the story when the kid said, Tortoise won, how? Withdrew. Hi. If we can withdraw, we are home. If we cannot withdraw, we are wandering. Somewhere lost, not at home. You know, in Tamil language, most of you here understand, Kadavul means what? God. <laughs> Meaning of the word. Ul means inside. Kada means stay. Stay inside. If you stay inside, you are divine. Ul. Inside, within. If you can stay inside, you are divine. If we go out, we are human. Wandering out in the world, we are human. If we know to withdraw, we are divine. Being inside is divine. What we do is we go there and we are lost. Fear of missing out. What is that called? FOMO. Fear of missing out. You know Jamo? Joy of missing out. FOMO is fear of missing out. J-O-M-O. -O. Joy of missing out. I am happy. I don't have to go there. You understand? If you go there and you miss something, you feel bad. Oh, I missed this, I missed that. I'm happy I missed out. The day we can say I am happy and I miss nothing in the world, that is a state of mind. That there's nothing for me to miss in the world. I know that the things in the world can't add to what I am. I am happy. Add something more and that makes me happy. No, I am happy. There's nothing to miss out there. 
So he says, just like a tortoise. So how should we practice? We should, the moment if something comes threatening to our peace, withdraw into knowledge, look at the situation through knowledge, that situation will not disturb us. Look at something through the vision of Gita. It won't bother us. It will not disturb us. Because we are looking at it through a higher vision. If we don't see it through a higher vision, small things will bother us. Small things will disturb. Continuously we get disturbed because our perception is lower. Ordinary. See the same situation through the wisdom of the Gita. Through vision of Gita. Through the Upanishadic vision. Look at it. A Vedantic vision. It will not disturb us. It will not bother. Any small thing would not bother. Otherwise, if we don't have that perception, that vision is not there, through knowledge, if we are not looking into the world, every small thing can rattle us. Why should we live like that? Let's look at the world through the wisdom. That is being like a tortoise. Moving in the world, various challenging situations come. Withdraw yourself into the shell of knowledge and then look at it. It will not disturb us. If we don't do that, then we are going, getting lost into the world. Every small thing will go on disturbing. Wise people are that way. Walking into the world and make sure that various things come, you know to block it. Check in, check out, put a strong gate here. What goes in, check first. Don't let everything go in. Isn't it? How many things we allow to go in? Once they go in, we are in trouble. So a filter, a gate is required here to see that, no, 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 these are not necessary. They need not go into my mind. Through eyes and through ears and through taste and touch, saying, stop, check in. That checking is required. This can come if we stay alert. And only way to stay alert, only way, I tell you spiritually, the only way to stay alert is regular reminders. Through class, through various methods, regular reminders. The moment we have those regular reminders, it is easy. Once you are quite established, even if you are lost in between, one reminder is enough to come back. Once, it's just a thought, you can lift yourself back. That is called bouncing back. I, I was not alert, I lost myself into the world, I became alert. Next, the moment you become alert to the, to the higher perception, vision, next moment you can bounce back. You're back to yourself, peaceful. It's a matter of this much. Where in the world you have literature? Where gods we worship, Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, Sahasranama, thousand names, the Lord whom we look up to, thousand names, invoking the divine through thousand names, thousand reminders to bounce back. Just one name, isn't it? One name of the Lord, just one name. You understand the meaning of it, the depth of it strikes you, that moment you withdraw, you have bounced back. How quickly it is. That is why in Hindu culture, names have beautiful meaning. Because someone calls by the name in the family, continuously it's a good reminder each name that way whom we address is a reminder names have beautiful meanings 
each name can shift our mind just a thought one name you lift yourself apart from the sahasranamas we have ashtotras ashtotra shatanamavali vyasa shankara gurudev tapon maharaj you name rama krishna 108 names apart from these thousand names you have whichever you are familiar with whichever you have memorized one name which one lifted yourself up just one name you see how quickly we can bounce back how quickly we can become a tortoise withdraw now you're fine back home oh i got lost it went doesn't matter it is natural to go into the world and when we go into the world we get kicked the world is that way and one name you're back here to your composed self peaceful just one name Om Avinashine Namaha. Just a name. Nash, destruction. Avinasha, that which cannot be destroyed. You and me. Is there any force to destroy us? Can you and I be destroyed as self? Is there a force to destroy the self? Yes. intercontinental ballistic missiles cannot destroy us we are avinasha the self is powerful mighty fire cannot burn it water cannot wet it weapons cannot cut it self has no destruction you and me is that one name we have withdrawn each name will indicate that only this culture is beautiful culture please remember most ancient in the world most ancient yet living with your own name you can reach god how much more easy spirituality can be made huh? think taking your own name reflecting upon it reminding that to yourself again and again you reach a quality you see the vision that's why naming is a beautiful event child is born we look at the star in which nakshatra the child is born under which uh, uh, tidi etc and then you say okay name the kids in these names in these letters then you choose a name which would be connected to the divine that one name is sufficient isn't it once we have understood vedantic vision your own name is sufficient for you to bounce back so tortoise is a powerful symbol very powerful you should keep it in your mind gift people tortoise <laughs> so that you also remember other person also remembers what is it vitro moment you feel threatened bounce back to your own self what can disturb you nothing can disturb you that is the mighty self we are gurudev said once he was doing classes in the open air and it was getting hot and someone want to hold umbrella he said no 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 keep all that out it's getting hot sun is scorching he laughed and he said it is this light which makes that shine it is this light which makes that shine that is you and me 
the moment we remember how mighty and how powerful we are what can sorrow do how can we be disturbed just one moment of withdrawing we are fine we are peaceful so he here in this verse he says yada samrate chayam just as the wise person withdraws the moment he feels like tortoise how tortoise withdraws itself the moment it is threatened so does a wise person withdraw himself and such a person who is able to withdraw at his will tasya pragnya pratishtita pragnya knowledgeable he is steady in wisdom falling is natural don't worry about falls we can keep falling down but how quickly you bounce back is your spiritual clarity fall yes the world will tempt you we may slip down here and there and we may go down momentary but how quickly we bounce back depends upon what kind of clarity you have on spiritual content your own reflection one moment withdrawn back so bouncing back is so easy and that's why tortoise is very very important it just tells you withdraw your back home if you don't withdraw your lost you withdraw your home continuing vishaya vinivartante vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinaha niraharasya dehinaha rasavarjam rasopyasya rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate vishaya vinivartante vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinaha niraharasya dehinaha rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate a very beautiful verse where krishna says vishaya vinivartante vishaya sense objects vinivartante withdraw sense objects go away vishaya vinivartante they turn away the sense objects turn away for that person niraharasya dehinah dehinah that individual who refuses to take ahara take nirahara do not take he who refuses not to take the objects turn away from that person vishaya vinivartante nirahara ahara swallowing nirahara not swallowing you say stop Uh, that person who says stop nirahara dehinah that individual who says no to the sense objects sense objects turn away from that person it all depends how strongly you say no this no which comes from you should have strength <laughs> when people serve food oh, what kind of a no you say no 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 your voice let you down <laughs> you never meant no 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 you want this no 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 you want this no nobody will approach you after that <laughs> you understand no <laughs> that no has no strength when we say no to the world that no should have strength whatever when we say no it should have strength that no is powerful sense objects come towards you you say no nothing doing they cannot 
If my no is not strong, there is no determination in that no, there is no strength in that no, the sense objects will come. Objects have to turn away. Look at the line, huh? Vishaya Vinivartante. They turn and go away. They go away from that person who says no to it. Vishaya Vinivartante. Niraha Rasya Dehinaha. To that Dehinaha, to that individual who says no, objects turn away. They cannot come. Because that no comes from strength. We move into the world, objects by themselves cannot come and trouble us. Because it is the same for everybody. Every object does not attract everyone. Isn't it? Only certain objects attract you. For some people, something else attracts them. You understand? So each individual, so it is something within. The object doesn't have a potential to attract you unless you have the attraction for the object within. Objects are the same. Do we like everything? We like few things and few things we don't like. There are people who like what we don't like. You understand? That's how it is. So the object by itself is the same to everybody. They don't have any power. Jada vastu. Inert. It has no power. It is the same. My liking for it from within gets me attracted. Please understand. It is my liking. I like it. Therefore, I get attracted to it. So here, deep inside, when I say no to them, it loses its attraction immediately. When you say no, the objects turn away. They cannot come. If the world says no to plastic with deep determination we will find a solution right but our no to plastic doesn't have strength conditionally no conveniently no <laughs> where i can afford i would say and some places so you, but it needs that no if we really say no production of that will stop it will stop, isn't it? Please think. You strongly say no. The message will go from, whole, from retail to wholesale to the production. Saying there is no demand for it. People are rejecting it. Producing production will stop. Something is produced if there is demand inside. If here there is no demand and you say no, that production of it itself will stop. So what a powerful line. Vishaya Vinivartante. You say no to some objects and collectively we feel no to it, production of it will stop. Vishaya Vinivartante Niraha Rasya Dehinaha But... I have said no strongly to the objects which are coming, various things. I have said no strongly, they turned away. But what about my memory of my past experience of that object? What about it in my memory? By saying no at the physical level, you have said no, but former experience with that object, that memory lingers in my mind. If it is not handled well, it can become a storm. And that no can become weak. So when I say no to an object, I have said no at the physical level, but my past experience of it, what we have experienced earlier, it still lingers in our mind. Rasa varjam, rasopyasya, rasa, the taste of it. 
the taste of the previous experience is still in my mind it can haunt me down it can keep lingering i have said no to an object but my past experience of it is still there in my mind which way, which in turn may force me to get back into the same way of life going into the objects so krishna understands this clearly he says even if you say no to something the taste of it still lingers in the mind rasavarjam rasopyasya that will also go the taste will also go when param drishtva nivartate param drishtva a glimpse of the higher param supreme drishtva glimpse a glimpse of the higher will burn away the taste in the memory it will not be the same effect otherwise only saying no at the physical level and the mind keeps demanding for it that taste stays in the mind and memory can come back very strongly on us but in the process you have a glimpse of the higher param drishtva nivartate that falls away he brings out a point saying you say no objects will turn away but be be aware don't be don't take into too much of confidence of yourself you have only said no they have moved away but from within there can be a havoc that will go only when you have a glimpse of the higher if we are inspired by the higher lower will not trouble us if i am attached to the higher it is easy to be detached with the lower param drishtva nivartate one glimpse of the higher one glimpse a bigger vision once you see are you fall in love with that greater vision grander way of life nobility you one glimpse you get an insight that is sufficient even for the memory to be burnt away this is where we get all when we see us the pragna just being in the presence of somebody moving around we see and we get all how these people are living here one higher glimpse the lower is trapped rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate the taste also drops off there was one poor man a farmer was walking and uh, a rich person in that town was moving towards a garden where gautam buddha had come to give sermon so the rich man was going and he saw this poor fellow the farmer didn't have much to wear also so he had a nice new shawl he gave the shawl to the poor man saying keep this is for you cover yourself stay warm the guy took the shawl new one on his shoulders he went he followed the rich man they are all going sit to the same garden so he went there there gautam buddha was sitting and giving his sermons so this guy also went and sat quietly was listening to gautam buddha and buddha went on with his lectures whatever he has to say he has said in the end when he is done with that people got up and they were offering different things to gautam buddha guru dakshana whatever they can each one went and gave something so different people wanted to give various things what they wanted this man also felt the urge within that i also want to give something to buddha he doesn't have anything except a brand new shawl that's all he has and he looks for a while no no 
Buddha has got all rich people, kings and all of them. They'll give. I don't have to spare the shawl. It's okay. Because he got something which he didn't have. He had it. But another part of his mind said, Are you not ashamed? Huh? That's something so beautiful he said and you don't want to even offer anything back. Guru Dakshina. Again, no, only one shawl. This puzzle was going on in his mind. Only one shawl. Should I give? Should I not give? Should I do this or not? One. You know, all can understand. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> all can understand. Many a times we are in this. Should I do this or not? Should I? Yes, no. Yes, no. The intellect will say this is right to do. The mind will say it's okay. So that tussle goes on, isn't it? So this restless tussle was in his mind. Buddha just looked at him once. One glance, they caught in contact. He saw Buddha. Buddha looked at him, smiled. The guy got up, took his shawl, folded it properly, went to Buddha, placed it at his feet and said, thank you. And Buddha smiled at him. He took the shawl because there were some monks and in, you know, like Buddha would give it. So he went on. I mean, Buddha was there. This man turned back and he went. When he was going back, there was a deep sense of fulfillment in him. Deep sense of fulfillment. He screamed, I have conquered it. I have conquered it. I have conquered it. It was loud scream with great joy. I have conquered it. Everyone is watching. What have you conquered? Well, the king was coming to meet Buddha. He looked at him and I said, Tell me, what have you conquered? And this farmer says, Desire. What have you conquered? Desire. What do you mean? If someone comes and tells us this, no? I have conquered desire, do you believe? Uh, somebody comes to you, hey, you know, I have conquered a desire. Ah, okay. I have heard this many a times. All right. We don't even believe if someone has to say that they have conquered desire. What do you mean, conquered desire? So the king looked at him and said, uh, explain, what do you mean? You conquered desire? Because that's the struggle. And you say you have conquered it. Huh? What did you do? I had only one shawl, new one, this morning I received. I gave it to Buddha. King laughed. Okay, child prattle. Something he has got, he has given, conquered. But anyway, the king was mighty pleased with him and he said, I'm very happy. That a citizen in my country who has hardly anything is also willing to support a noble cause. Might he pleased with him. And he had two shawls. He said, keep this. I am gifting you two. Keep this. So he received from the king. He said, really? Is it for me? Yes, sir. It is for you. Oh, thank you very much ran to Buddha, left both at Buddha's feet. He said, I do not know, I am very fortunate, I never thought I can give you something more, but today looks like I could give you something more. Both the shawls. Buddha simply smiled, walked away. The king saw him handing over two of his shawls to Buddha. He said, hey listen, we understand your generosity, what you did is fine, it's a good gesture, but you keep this for you. I'm there to take care of Buddha, you keep this. Gives him another shawl, runs again. <laughs> Thank you, and keeps it to Buddha, absolute gratitude. Now the king got curious. Does he really mean that he has conquered a desire? Let's rub, let's test him if he has really conquered. Takes his jewelry, gold chain. Keep it, this is for you. He said, really? 
ran to Buddha and he said, Sir, I don't know what is happening today. I have got this beautiful chain. I'm sure you know to make use of it better. This is for you. Another Guru Dakshana. The king could not believe. And finally the king says, Whatever is there in my chariot along with the horses is yours. He went, tied the horses under a tree, left the chariot, came to Gautam Buddha and said, when you have to go now, you can use that chariot, that is yours. It's yours. I have nothing. This is called conquering. This is called conquering. A day should come in our life. We should have a day in our life where we can also say, I have conquered desire. That is victory. I have conquered. I have come here. It is a struggle. This was the struggle, but I, I am victorious. I conquered desire. Thank you. How did this happen? One glance of Buddha, that contact when he made, he caught up and he went and offered Param Drishtva, Param Supreme Drishtva, one glimpse of the higher. Rasavarjam rasopyasya. Even the past memories gets burnt off. They become ineffectual the moment we understand. One glimpse of the higher. This will not bother. We drop it. It will not be something which would come and linger in our mind again. When we do not have a glimpse of the higher, a noble life, a beautiful way of life, if we don't see it, we would. The pettiness would keep coming back again and again. But one glimpse of a higher life, it will inspire us to lift ourselves up. After that, to go down to the lower level would be a pain. You will not do it. This can happen. A glimpse of the higher can happen when we are regular in our sadhana, study, reflection, chapa, dhyana. If we are regular in all this, the mind gets that kind of a maturity, settles itself, it will have a glimpse of the higher. One glimpse or life's Changes. Is it not true? How many people we have seen? The moment one insight of the higher, they drop everything and move. Valmiki, Ratnakar, the decoit. What kind of a life he was leading? Killing people, destroying. One glimpse. Narad made him think. In those few moments it hit him, changed, sat down there for tapas and the ant hill was formed because he did not even get up. Valmiki means ant hill. He sat in his meditation. When Ratnakar sat in his meditation, the dust and things like that gathered, he did not bother, stayed. Mud formed, a anthill was formed. He was inside still meditating. One glimpse of the higher life changed. What a contribution he made for humanity. Nimitra matram bhavasavya sachin. When you become his instrument, you have no idea what he will do through you. If you become his instrument. One glimpse of personality changed completely.
वी आर ग्रेटफुल टू दैट पर्सन टिल डेट इज इंट इट वाल्मीकि ही प्रेजेंटेड ग्लोरी ऑफ रामा सो दैट वी स्टार्टेड वर्शिपिंग हिम ही प्रेजेंटेड हनुमान वी स्टार्टेड वर्शिपिंग हिम recorded and made the perfect presentation who who was a decoyed at one point of time he said no to decoity it never came back had the glimpse of a higher life all the old memories gone became a absolutely pure instrument in the hands of the lord विषय विनिवर्त निराहार से देहिन रसवर्ज रसोप्य परम दृष्ट निवर्तते हैविंग सीन द हायर ऑल दिस ड्रॉप ऑफ कंटिन्यूइंग हरती प्रसभ मन यथो यपि कौंतेय कौंतेय अर्जुन वॉट आर द नेम्स ऑफ अर्जुन इन भगवद गीता वॉट एवर यू नो से लेट अस सी अदरवाइज आई लास्क महाबाहो ओके सव्य साचिन पार्थ धनंजय कौंतेय ओके गुडाकेश दट्स इट ओवर हा भारत ऋषभ हा भारत ऋषभ परंतप ट्रू हा हा falguna okay now there are so many ways krishna calls arjuna anaga o sinless one you know bharata utishta bharata 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 rishabha that goes on many many names but two names kaunteya and partha he uses it more than 50 times combined partha and kaunteya is something which krishna calls arjuna minimum 50 times combined together 27 28 something like that what is the meaning of partha huh son of son of prata who's prata kunti so kaunteya and partha both mean the same son of prata prata is another name for kunti son of kunti ho son of prata o partha kaunteya son of kunti twice two this particular name he addresses at least partha and kaunteya maximum recently sometime back people took a movement in india we will put our mother's name instead of father's name 
all celebrities all came out you know they'll put their mother's name your name and followed by mother's name as if it is a new revolution when in our culture the credit of mother is taken away that you have to reclaim it when was it taken away that you have to reclaim it it is never taken away one can assume set a narrative that it is denied and we are showing we are proud of your mothers and suddenly by putting your name you are showing krishnam vande jagat guru that universal teacher called arjuna with his mother's name maximum kaunteya and partha it's a very age old tradition women empowerment women should empower others because they are already powerful women empowerment look look i'm i'm talking about krishna's reverence for kunti that he addresses arjuna maximum with his mother's name hey kaunteya not arjuna kaunteya pandava very rarely he uses once or twice pandava son of pandu kaunteya partha often that's that's what it is so here he says yatato hyapi kaunteya o son of kunti son of that noble lady archana understand yatata yapi purushasya vipaschita o kaunteya o son of kunti understand indeed these sense organs pramatini these sense organs are powerful pramatini powerful indriyani the sense organs what we have the sense organs are indeed powerful pramatini let us accept it is powerful it is not easy it's not something very simple it is its mighty force so indeed pramatini indriyani haranti prasabam manaha haranti this powerful sense organs pramatini indriyani these powerful sense organs forcibly haranti prasabam manaha forcibly take away the mind vipaschitah purushasya purushasya vipaschitah vipaschitah a person who is seeking striving quite advanced even a person who is walking the path slightly advanced vipaschitah more or less we call him a wise person not to the level of stata pragna but otherwise an advanced seeker that would be a better word advanced seeker even for an advanced seeker the sense organs forcibly carry the mind away nigriya shakim what would a restraint do it is to say you have chosen a path which is like a razor's edge it's not going to be easy caution you're walking this path you're trying to withdraw the senses you're settling the mind this will not be easy never at any point of time take it for granted stay alert till the end this is important little practice and we think oh we have mastered it i can play with it don't be sure krishna's maya is not easy he has said it loud and clear mama maya duraktaya those who have surrendered sincerely seeking kept the mind there and sincerely pursuing staying alert never allowing it to get into your head that i have uh, managed my senses don't be sure you never know how it comes so even a wise person if he is not alert he could be lost haranti prasabam manaha the mind can be forcibly taken away forcibly 
what would a restraint do? A person who is starting in the beginning, just making his way, how it is going to be? First lecture on Vedanta. And if you think next day I will realize God. First day you heard, oh yes, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the intellect. Uh, you need to drop vasana, okay. I think I will realize soon. <laughs> Don't get there. We need to do it with extra care, caution. Adi Shankaracharya says in Viveka Chudamani, forgetfulness is death. Please remember this. Mrityuhu Pramade, forgetfulness is death. If I forget the goal that is equal to dying only, I miss out. Pramade. So we need to walk this path with, with very much extra alert. Every day we need to remember, every day we go and bow down to God, seeking His grace to keep us on the path of virtue, courage and wisdom every day. Only that way we would stay alert. If we are not alert, we could be dragged away. What happens when we get dragged away? We lose time. In getting dragged away, we have incurred more impressions, more karma. The process gets delayed and delayed. That which we could reach, just because we are not alert, we are delaying. And the delay could mean few births. Not just one, it could be few births. Why should we get there? It is important to we stay really alert to pursue this path. So he says here, he says, Indeed the powerful sense organs forcefully carry away the mind even of a person yatataha who is striving. So what about others? Others should be much more careful, much more alert. If we are not, it is a caution given, saying stay alert to this, otherwise we could be lost. So it is a warning, which, which anybody would do. Caution people saying, on this path, these are the pitholes, you better be careful so that you can avoid and move on. Continuing. Thani Sarvani. Thani Sarvani Samhyamya. Thani Sarvani Samhyamya. Yukta Asita Matpara. Sarvani Samyamya Yukta Asita Matparaha Yukta Asita Matparaha Vashehi Asindriyani Vashehi Asindriyani Tasya Pragna Pradishtita Tasya Pragna Pradishtita Okay. We will look into this verse tomorrow.